from the prophet in the Old Testament is that there are not many prayers that you will find in the writings of the prophets. And there is a, there is a reason for that because of their unique calling, they don't have the same need as we, we have. They don't approach God, God at the same, at the same way. Like you and I, we often come to God, we present requests, we present petitions, supplication, Lord, help me here, Lord, help me that. But for the prophets, if you know their calling, they have been called divinely, appointed by the Holy Spirit, they receive visions, they have messages, they hear God's message over and over again. So their prayer is not like ours. When the, the few times they express their prayers, their prayers are related to the prophecy that God has just given to them. And also they look at the conditions of the people and they feel God's heart. They look at the suffering. They look at the disobedience of the people and they feel what the, the people are missing for. And that is what we are going to look at uh, this morning. So one of the first things, the, there are not many prayers in the writings of the prophet. The second thing that we know by studying the prophets is that they talk to us about our life. They talk to society about righteousness to walk. That's why I call this message the prayer of the righteous. Because I believe this is the kind of prayer that will bring a result. That will bring the fire down. That will bring the blessing that you're looking for. That will bring you closer to the Lord. The blessing. So two things that we find in the writings of the prophets that God desires. The first one is a clean heart. Is your heart clean? Are you pretending to be a Christian or are you a true Christian? That's what it means. Are you living the life that you, that you profess that you, you are Christians? Does your life show that you really believe that? Do you have clean hearts? Do you have clean life? And this, the second thing is right living. Do you live right according to the directions, the standards of the Bible? And we will learn a little bit what, what we mean by praying the prayer of the righteous. What is it walking in righteousness and what is so important? So we want to look at one of Isaiah's prayer. And I want you to really look at how he begins his prayer. And let's use it as a model. You know, we have many models for prayer. The Lord's Prayer is a model. We have many. Paul's Prayer are models for us. We have taken classes and courses uh, how to pray, uh, how long to pray, should we kneel, should we stand, should we sit, how do we, a lot of methods. So this morning we want to look at Isaiah's Prayer in chapter 67, verse 7. We will skip one, one slide. I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. I will praise the Lord for all he has done. So the first thing that he starts, he starts to the Lord until praising the Lord. And realize with me this morning the conditions in which they are. Their life is not easy. They are being persecuted. They are in exiles. There is a lot of tremendous uh, persecutions, uh, oppressions. There is no food. It's a lot of pains everywhere. Children are, are suffering from hunger. And the first thing that Isaiah does, because he knows God, he prays the Lord. So when we come this year, and today we start our praise and worship, let's, let's follow his model. Let's, let's start praising the Lord's unfailing love. And one thing I want you to uh, observe and grab for yourself this morning, that you will see looking in the past of God's dealing with Israel, and realize that God is the same and God deals with you and will deal with you in exactly the same manner he, he is dealing with his people. It's the same God. It's the same human heart. What God is after with their heart is after with your heart as well. So observe his prayer. And the first thing that he declares are God's attributes. Insisting and emphasizing his unfailing love. That is what he wants you to grab this morning. If you want to pray with results, 
If you want to be perseverant in prayer, if you want to be motivated by prayer, you need to at least get that truth settled in your heart. God's unfailing love. That's, that's why I, 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 I go to God in prayer. That, that's what motivates me. I believe that God loves me. So I can go to God and, and he, will, he will help me. So what Isaiah does, he only displays loving kindness, great goodness, mercies, that's how he present God uh, to us this morning. God called them his own very people, his very own people. And he is looking to you just in the same way. You are special to God. Can you say that this morning? I am special to God. It's true. It's not only something I make you repeat. You are special to God. How do I know that? He proved it. He sent his son for you. Jesus died for you. So you must believe that you are that special to God. How securing it is. God knew in advance, we read in this time here, in this text here, that God knew in advance that they would betray him. And nevertheless, we, we read that he ch still chose to become their savior. How comforting is that to you, that thought? That even though you are not perfect, even though God knows that you will fail, in 2016 you will make mistakes, you will see things, you will do things, you will go somewhere, you will, you will be doing some things that maybe you will regret after that. But God is not finished with you. God is not like, uh, he, we, we learn about God is slow to anger. So even though God knows that we will fail him in some ways, because we are made like this, we are imperfect, he still chose to be your savior, amen? amen. And it goes with the New Testament. When we were still sinner, God died for us. So that's, we see that the Old Testament, the New Testament is the same thing. What, what touched me a lot in this text here is that he and, their, and all their suffering, verse nine, he also suffered. Uh, you remember when we had the big uh, uh, tsunami? That was horrible, the big tsunami in Indonesia and everything. And, and these are questions that comes to our mind. How, how can God allow this? Is God is so powerful? Is God is love? Where is God in those things like this? But I see a, a text like that. And when people suffer, God suffer. Now, God is not to be blamed for every uh, uh, bad thing that happens to good people in this world. There's a lot of things that happens here, just like natural causes uh, that are just like uh, injustice, that are uh, people abusing others. There's a lot of reasons why there's a lot of trouble in this world. But in all of human suffering, God is suffering with. If, if you belong to him particularly, he has this, this heart for you. He feels sorry and he will rescue uh, yourself. He says that uh, he redeemed them. And here is a special, a very encouraging expression here, he redeemed them. It's the kinsman redeemer. That's the verb that he is using here. He redeems them. It's like Jesus Christ is our kinsman redeemer, the next of kin, and he will take care, make sure that what you are failing with, what you cannot do on your own, you don't have any, enough money to purchase back the land, the next and kin will do it. Uh, you know, concerning marriage, property, vengeance, uh, deliverance, rescuing, you have a kinsman redeemer that will take care of you. For the entire journey, he lifts them and he carries them. So I want you to know one thing this morning. Be sure of this when you start your week of prayer and fasting. God loved you from the beginning. He loved you before you were born. He loved you when you were a tiny little baby. He loved you when you were going through your schooling. He loves you now. He will love you tomorrow. He will keep on loving you. So when you start your prayer this week, just remember that. Be sure that He loves you. And He will be with you and He will lift you and He will carry you. And uh, this is a very special expression here. He says, through all the years, it means um, to, uh, uh, I wrote it somewhere here, to the days of old. And that means to the infinity of time. 
to the vanishing point of time. So there is no limit to the love of God and time or whatever place we are. There's no geography, there's no time, there's no generation. God loves you. So in all of your journey with God, God will be with you. And what you need to remember this morning is unfailing love, great goodness, mercy. He chose to save you. You are his very own possession. These are all speaking to you uh, this morning. Verse 11. Then Isaiah in his prayer remembered that those days of old when Moses led his people out of Egypt. And now you will see a bunch of questions here. And these are the same questions that we struggle with today when we go out through hardship. Where is God? Where is the one who led us? And uh, where is the one who sent his Holy Spirit? Where is the one whose power was displayed? Where is the one who divided the sea? Where, uh, where, where is the one who led them through? the bottom of the sea and then these are the questions that we ask over and over again where is the one how many times this question is being raised and we we when we are going through tough times we cannot recognize God's presence God's working we don't know if he's not uh, there or, or not and we are struggling uh, with that and this text there are three in the short few verses there are three mentions of the Holy Spirit and verse 10 that we don't see in this text, it says that they have grieved this Holy Spirit. And verse 11 over here, it says that where is the one who sent the Holy Spirit to be amidst the, them? The presence of the Holy Spirit was there. You know, sometimes we think that the Holy Spirit is something of the New Testament. But uh, uh, we can see in this text the Holy Spirit was, was very much involved in the life of Isaiah, in the life of his people. When they were working through the wilderness, when they were in Egypt, the Holy Spirit was providing. The Holy Spirit was there with his sign and miracles. They have been delivered from Egypt through signs and powers, the ten plagues and all the miraculous things that God can do is done through the power of the Holy Spirit. And he was there. So where is the one who sent the Holy Spirit to live among us? And this year, let me challenge you that this is the normal condition for God's people and it should be the normal condition for every church nowadays and it should be the condition of our church here. Where is the one who sent the Holy Spirit to be in our midst? If we don't have the Holy Spirit manifesting the power of the Holy Spirit touching lives, changing lives, healing bodies and working signs and miracles, something's missing. If the Holy Spirit, you don't recognize the activities of the Holy Spirit in your own life, there's something missing. So let us agree on one thing as we approach prayer this year. Shouldn't we pray to God, where is, and bring him back into our midst that we might, like in the book of Acts chapter 4, when they prayed together and the house was shaken, that the, we, they prayed for boldness, they prayed for signs and wonders, they prayed so that God will glorify himself in the midst of their sufferings, their persecutions, their injustice, that they will not be paralyzed, they will not just let go, they will not quit being, the, the, live the fullness of the, the calling that they had received. So in Lighthouse this year, let's agree on that. Let's ask God to bring the, the, the Holy Spirit to be manifest, that we may experience the supernatural. You pray for someone and experience the miracle of God. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. So then the, the verse 14, we see another wonderful truth. It is the Holy Spirit who guides and leads them to rest. When the Holy Spirit lead, this is wonderful. When the Holy Spirit leads the church, this will be wonderful. When the Holy Spirit bless a project, this will be wonderful. When the Holy Spirit lead your life, this you will, we will lead you to rest. He will lead you to peace. He will be the one manifesting uh, and taking care of your needs. Giving you peace, and this is what it, what it means, is he leads you to settle down in a place of safety where their needs were being met. This is what it means here. So let the Holy Spirit lead you completely this year. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Verse 15. His prayer, Lord, look down from heaven, look from your holy, glorious home and see us. Don't you see a parallel 
between this first line and the Lord's Prayer. Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Be glory to your name. May your will be done. May your greatness, may we serve you. And this is what, uh, this is, you know, Isaiah is the evangelist of the Old Testament. And he has the heart, he has the heart of the good news, he has the heart of Jesus. And he, he touched us. And when, uh, and this part of, of the text here, you will see that Isaiah is appealing to God's fatherhood. This is clear that he really addressed God uh, as a father. And he, he is now raising the qualities that belongs to fatherhood. Uh, what are that? Passion. Passion for our children, like ex extreme care. We, we really love them and we want the best for them. That's one. Where is the, your passion? Where is the passion that, that the father should have uh, f for us? So passion is definitely one of the quality. The might, the safety, the strength, the power to defend, to protect, to lead, uh, to correct if needed. Where is the strength of God to show on our behalf? Where are your mercy? You know, parents, Many times you don't treat your children like they deserve, is that right? You let them get by a lot of things. Otherwise, you would maybe be punishing them 24-7, you know? Like always correcting them on everything that they say wrong, they do wrong, and everything. So mercy is not treating them as, you know, they deserve. And God the Father is just so merciful to us. Imagine if God would treat us as we deserve all the time, 24-7. Oh, that would be hard for us. Huh? So God is merciful. He doesn't, and he is compassionate uh, for us. So, so he's calling on the father, fatherhood of God. And this is like a statement of faith. This is a great, great faith that he is praying. In other words, even though we are in the worst of conditions, we go in exiles, our world's crumbles, uh, everything goes bad in our lives, Fa you will always be our father. We always, you will never abandon. If Moses, Aaron abandon us, you will never abandon us. You will always be our father. This is so, so encouraging to believe that God has chosen you. He has adopted you as his own. You are his very own, you are his child, and he will continue to be your child, uh, your father, and take care of you. You know, for those parents who have had some very rebellious or sinful children who walk away from the Lord and did horrible things, parents cannot stop wondering, caring, praying for, thinking of, uh, hoping that they will be back, like uh, wishing for the best. And if the child sometimes are liars, they know how to manipulate the parents. You see that all the time. They may receive, ah, do you have uh, some money for me? Yes, I'm changing my life. I will be okay, will be okay. So you get some money, then they go back again. Uh, you know, and then the parents can't go on. You just cannot stop loving. I don't know any parents who stop loving their children. And this is what, this is how Isaiah approached God and prayer. God, it doesn't matter what happened to us, any situation in which we are, you will always treat us as the father that you are to us. You will never, how comforting it is to you this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hello, are you there? Yes. yes. Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay, I thought you left already. <laughs> Hallelujah. And notice one thing. This is a very rare concept in the Old Testament. The fatherhood of God is not talked about very much, almost never in the Old Testament. It is Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son that has introduced the Father God to us, the Father's love to, to us, the Father's rede redemption, His plan, and then tells us to approach God in prayer and how to pray to the Father. It's Jesus that, that, that did that. Before it was kind of an unknown concept. God was not a father until Jesus came. But Isaiah says in his prayer a long time ago, he is your father and he will continue to be your father. So whatever happens, and again the idea of the Redeemer from age past, he is your father and he is also the next of kin. He is there to take care 
of whatever you are not able to do on your own. When you're too weak, when you're without resources, he will be there to help you. So, saying this, this is how Isaiah introduced us to prayer, to approaching God in this way, okay? Does that help you to approach God in prayer? We are beginning like a, a journey of a one week journey of fasting and prayer. I can be more than that, but this is what we agree, or most of us agree uh, for one week corporately, we're going to pray. So why not use this model this week and go to a God that has unfailing love, that has great goodness, mercy, and all the, the qualities of a father to us, and go to him just like, like you are as a child. Amen. Now, if you do that, what will happen to you? Let's look at the next, next verse. Isaiah 58, verse 9. This is expressing your desire. This is what you want to see. When we talk about prayer, this is what you want. Then you will call, and the Lord will answer. How many wants that? Hello? Then the Lord will, uh, will answer. You will cry for help and you will see, here I am. I love it. The here I am. It means that he is already there. He's already so near. And he's already disposed. And he is really connecting with you. He was attentive to you. That is what it means. Here I am. Like you, it's like you're searching. Where, where are you, God? Uh, I have something for you, God. And God says, hey, I, I'm, I'm just beside you. I'm, I'm just ready for you. I was ready for you. And this is the readiness of God. This is, this is, this is the, the God. This is his plan. This is how he wants to bless you. Amen? This is important to us because this is a promise. This is a promise to you for when you pray. If you pray in the right way, the prayer of the righteous, if your life follow God, your heart is after God, and you live rightly, uh, as we will see a bit later, then, hey, then, that's good. Something will happen. Then you will call, you will pray, and I will answer. Wow, that's the prayer I want to experience this week, this year in 2016, when I will cry for help. I don't have to look far, a, a God somewhere, do something, some religious duties. He's, he's been already there, so close to us, so attentive to, to us. Now let's continue, because there's a context to that. This is the promise of God for prayers. Then your light will break out like the dawn. Your healing, restoration, your new life will quickly spring forth. Your righteousness will go before you, leading you to peace and prosperity. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. If you continue the next click, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places, giving you water when you are dry and restoring your strength. You will be like a well-watered garden, like an ever-flowing spring whose waters do not fail. Some of you, huh? some of you, not all of us, but some of you, hopefully many of us, some of you will rebuild the deserted ruins, the deserted lives the broken lives. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You will have an impact on the next generation, on your children, on people nearby. This week I was in the train coming to church and it's, it was very special. And I was reading my, my, my phone, my Bible on my phone, and there were two uh, Chinese men. They were talking and talking and talking. And actually there was one of them who sat you know, wrongly, and he was kind of squeezing me, and I didn't really, really like that, you know. <laughs> anyway, I'm reading my Bible, and this. So just before he reached to Kowloon Tong, he turns, and he says, hey, where are you from? Uh, so, so I take away my, my earplug, and I'm just talking to him. Oh, I'm from Canada, okay, okay. So uh, what are you doing? I am a pastor, and then this conversation is in, is in Chinese. I say, so I says, uh, uh, the So I'm a pastor in the church. And then he, he quote to me in Mandarin, Psalm uh, 23. And, uh, and he, he quoted all completely perfectly. But before that, he kind of said that 
He had been surrounded with Christian, influenced with Christian, but he was not one of them. So I said, I, oh, that's good, that's good. You must be a Christian, you must believe. Do you believe? And he says, no, I don't believe. I have, I have too many questions about God. I have too many questions. So now he starts to give me his arguments, the question that keeps him from believing in God. And then, because now we got to Kowloon Tong, so he was going to get out. Of, so I says, I don't want him to just leave like that. So I says, even though you have questions, there are answers to these questions. If you want, I can answer these questions. He took his name card and gave it to me. So I have a mission now. <laughs> I have to track him down and I have to answer his questions. And this is a bit what, what we are reading here. If, if you are after God, God will give you divine appointment. He will give you missions. That's why Lighthouse, we need to pray this, this prayer. We need all of this uh, to, to be successful, to, to move forward. So how many of you this way? I want to challenge you. You look at this text. Note it, write it in your notebook or in your phone, put it on your fridge, on your mirror, on your working desk, somewhere, put it there, and let it be your goal for 2016. Do you agree? Do you want that? Is that the kind of uh, prayer with resolve that you would like to have? Is that how you want to pray and have all of these results coming out of your life? A supernatural flowing uh, results that comes out of the power of God, the, 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 the Holy Spirit displaying is, it says that, that you pr pray every day, that you pray for whatever it is, you will call and the Lord will answer. He is right there next to you. At me, I, at me this, is, this is now my new goal, okay? I'm telling you, this is my goal for this year. This will be part of my prayer. I will make sure that it will be reminded to me throughout this year. I will set this goal. If you have a mobile phone, take it and take a photo of this. Or just make sure that you remember that you remember that. Let this be your goal. And be encouraged that what we just read are promises that the Lord himself makes to you. Hey, listen, who is speaking here? Who is he speaking to? What is God's intention? What, what does he want you to, to know from him? He wants you to know. Then. I love the word then. That means if something takes place, then something else will be the result of that. You pray, then. You pray the prayer of the righteous. Your heart is, your life is clean. Your life is righteous. You walk with God. You are not only have uh, outward appearance or just uh, fasting for fasting, but you really look for God's interest first. Seek God first. Go to God as, as He is. Because if you look at the rest of this chapter, you know what this chapter is. Eh? These are wonderful promises. Let's set them as goals. But these promises come with conditions. And these conditions are serious conditions. And there's a lot of things that uh, we need to pay attention. And next verse, we will go very, very quickly. This is a reproach that God says about the people who fast in the wrong way. They approach God in the wrong way. There's a good way to pray that will bring the previous promise. And there's a wrong way to practice our religious life without uh, sincerity, without depth and, and faith. You act pious. You go to the temple and you pretend. It's, you look righteous, but you pretend that you want to be near to me. And then you boast that you have fasted. And then you think that you are impressing God. And then you tell God, oh, look, God, I've been so hard on myself. I didn't eat today. And, God, and then they, they said, God, you did not even answer my prayer. You don't even notice me. And then God answered. He says, I have a reason. This is not about fasting and not eating. This is about your heart. This is about you connecting with me. This is about faith. This is about sincerity. If you don't live the life that I have for you, 
then well, this kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. And then when you go next, you will see the fast that God wants. It's like the life. It's not a, only a fast. It's, it's a life. It's a walking prayer that God wants. It, it is like a life that honors him. And then he says, uh, next, next verse. And then you will see, no, this kind of fasting I want. And it says, free those to whom you are unfair. Share your food, be generous, give shelter, give clothes. Live the life of a Christian. Take care of others people need. And then the, the last part here, you will see in verse 9. Stop making trouble for others. Stop pointing fingers to, at others. Stop blaming others. Stop gossiping about other people's sin. Stop spreading vicious rumors. Use cruel words. And then instead, pour out your heart to others. Bring something good to others. That is how God wants the combination of two things. Your prayer and your righteous living. Live in the, the way that God has set and his, and his word. And everything will work. Of course, there is the grace of God. It goes, God, God goes beyond. But look at what he says. Your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. Even though a lot of things is not really physically or materially really good for you, there will be a light inside of you that will glow and the darkness will dispel and your life will be turned around immediately by the presence of God. That's my goal for this year. Let me just finish quickly with the, some statement about the prayer of the righteous. What is the prayer of the righteous? Number one, the prayer of someone who knows God intimately who walks with God. Just like we saw from Isaiah, we can see that Isaiah know God. He thinks like God. He has the heart of God. He, he knows his attributes, his qualities. Number two, the prayer of someone whose life is consistent with the word of God. He walks the talk. Doesn't live a double life. A life of darkness, Monday out of the church, you come to church seemingly like a good Christian. No, I met somebody in, not too long ago, and I had a conversation about something like that. Number three, a prayer that stirs up actions of goodness, generosity, and fairness. A prayer that stirs up actions. It's not like a passive prayer. It's not only a meditative uh, prayer. Uh, just, oh Lord, I want to feel your presence. Oh Lord, touch me. I want to feel. I want to feel. It's more, it's more than that. More than more than I feel. It's a, it's a, a prayer that brings up actions of goodness. These actions are not for us. Don't you agree that most of our prayers are, oh Lord, please, I never need. Give me, give me, give me, give me. It, uh, many of our prayers, most of our prayers. And it's not wrong. It's not wrong to pray for our needs. I'm not saying that because the Lord's Prayer says, give us every day our daily bread. Okay, so we agree with that. We have so many needs anyway. So it's okay. And God is inviting us to run freely to the throne of grace. And he will help us in our times of need. This is biblical. But what we are learning here, the prayer of the righteous, is a prayer that consider God's interest first. The prayer of a prophet the prayer that filled the heart of God for his generation. The prayer that touched your heart and makes you feel compassion for someone next to you. That wants you to make a difference and get involved and do something. It leads you to something. I want to present a challenge to you this week. We are reading this, this text here. We are fasting this week. Can we, listen, can we this week Ask God to help us to find someone that has a need and to do toward this person that God will bring to us, the Holy Spirit, an action of goodness, something special. It may be a, a phone call, if that's all we can do. Uh, it may be a, 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 a meal or, or something, or, or helping financially, or it Whatever the Holy Spirit, I'm not telling you do this or do that. 
saying, can we, as we pray and fast, if you are fasting this week, to go just a step further, Lord, help me to do an actions of goodness so that your unfailing love will be manifested to someone else through me. That's my prayer. I want to honor you. I want your reputation to be magnified. I want to make a difference in the life of someone. Can we agree on this? You don't have to show your hands, but just think about it. Number four, a prayer with action solutions. It's the prayer that Lighthouse needs. The board, the pastors, the missions. Why do we do missions as we do in Lighthouse? Why is it so important with us? Where are we going to do missions? We have a, a few churches that are being uh, uh, built and, and uh, they, they are struggling with finance, with uh, the, the law of the land and uh, all of these things. So how do we pray? How do we come together? How do we support that? Uh, how God is leading us for that. The missions, the mission of your own individual life. The prayer with actions that will shape your decisions, that will shape the, the actions that you choose to do in different situations. That's the prayer of the righteous. And actions that will uh, lead you to, to shape to guide you into something that will be pleasing to the Lord. Number five, a prayer that comes with words of healing. A prayer that brings healing or bring comfort or brings unity and reconciliation. When you pray, you will pray and God will give you also words to speak to someone. You may pray for someone and then that prayer, there will be some kind of a prophetic revelation, uh, uplifting, uh, uh, healing will take place. And, and your life, because of your prayer, will keep spreading unity, will be good for the body of Christ, will bring something good in the life, it will uh, soothe the pain, lift the people that have needs because of you, because you are connected with God in this. So that's my challenge to you this week. Would you follow with us and commit ourselves? In a few minutes, we will begin the movie. Grab a glass of water. Stay here with us this afternoon. Get that movie war room. You will be transformed by it. And it will motivate you and push you. And throughout this prayer week, it will change you. It's a powerful movie. It's not just like a movie like a Hollywood style. It's, it's a movie with a message. It's a, it will impact you seriously. And it's just at the beginning, uh, we, we did not choose to present a movie just to keep you occupied this afternoon. Of course not. This is the beginning of our prayer fasting. Uh, Pastor Jennifer has been inspired and to suggest that idea. Then we inquire more of the movies and you have heard some of the testimonies. It will impact you. And parents, your children, bring them. Let them pray here. Pray with them and, and your home. This week, let it be special and let set the goal of the prayer of the righteous just like we said for the year 2016. We want the one who sent the Holy Spirit in our midst to send the Holy Spirit in our midst. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you 